Hello, hello, everybody. Happy, happy Wednesday. Sorry for the delay. If you were waiting on me, I Zoom did a funny thing and I had to start over. Uh, okay, I'm just going to check as always and see. If you are live, please say hi. That always helps me to know that we are here. Oops, I'm going to have to mute myself. There we go. Um, yeah, if you're live, say hi, let me know that you're here. Today is all about embodying the CEO role and creating more success. And this concept of the CEO role, whatever that means to you, um, is really, really near and dear to my heart because I've gone on my own journey with uh, what it means to be CEO. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but it's also something that um, has really risen to the top for me in the last maybe two years in my business around um, one of the common themes that not only am I helping my clients with, but the, it's a common theme that I see as a challenge, or maybe I want to even instead say, this is something that we're all still learning. I would argue that just like we're all still learning how to be a good human. Uh, we're all still learning and growing as humans, as souls. Um, if you're a parent, you're always going to be learning as a parent. You're, it's never like you're just going to like arrive at this point where you're like, so, okay, check that box. I'm the perfect parent. I have mastered this moving on now, right? Like you're always in a space of learning. And um, I feel that if you're running a conscious business and what you're doing is really meaningful for you, to, for you in particular, I would argue that all CEOs, if they want to be successful, if they, if it's meaningful to them to do what they're doing, this is a constant learning journey. This is, or an ongoing journey. This is not something that you just like, oh, again, arrive at, check the box and move on. There's always something to learn. And that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. That's the beauty of having a business that grows and evolves no matter what, in what way your business grows and evolves. There's always something more to learn. And that's how I actually really want to start off today because I think so oftentimes when I meet with clients, potential clients, um, there is a very common theme, and this is people who have many of my clients and have been in business for many years. Many of my clients are making really, really good money. This has nothing to do with their level of success, how long they've been in business, how much money they're making. It's across the board. We, there are things that in this um, topic, there are things from the perspective of being a business owner that we judge ourselves for. There are things from the perspective of being a business owner that we think we aren't doing right. There are things um, from a business owner perspective where we can always be learning. And so <clears throat> that's how I want to start off talking about this topic today, because it's that, it's that important that we take this perspective of this being an ongoing journey, this being, I'm always here to learn as a business owner. I'm always going to want to keep learning and growing as a business owner, um, as a CEO, as a leader, as a boss, babe, as a business owner, whatever, as whatever it is that you want to call yourself. Um, because I do think that that's an important part of, of today's conversation too, but I'm a coach, no matter what, and whether I open two businesses, three businesses, whatever, what, whatever craft I'm doing or whatever service I'm providing, um, I always want to keep doing better there. And I always want to keep becoming a better and better business owner. That's just something I always want to do. And how you define that is how we're going to start talking about that first. What, what does it mean to be step into the CEO role? What does it mean for you to be successful? You have to define that. Here's the secret. You have to define that for yourself um, and for your business. And we're going to talk about that a little bit too. But if you are truly going to continue along this journey and you're not looking at it as a learning experience, experience, not as it's cool. I'm a new business owner. I can have this learning experience, but one day I'll just get it. Uh, I, I think there's a little bit of, um, sort of danger to like, it's not all that different than saying like you've figured out life, <laughs> right? Like you can, you can really 
have your shit together, right? In life. And you can really find, have learned how to make yourself happy. You can be a solid human. You can be giving, you can be all these things. And if you aren't, if you're kidding yourself that you're not still a work in progress and that you're not still growing, then there's something missing. And so again, I just want to argue, hi, Allie, welcome, welcome. It's good to see your face. Um, well, your little tiny circle face uh, in here. Um, anyway, it, then I think you're kidding yourself. And so again, I think just starting off with however you want to define your CEO level self, and we'll get to that, we have to start looking at this as a learning journey um, and an ongoing learning journey. And so stop expecting yourself. This is also about from minute eight in this live stream. This conversation is also about letting go of expecting that one day you'll get there. It doesn't mean that you can't um, feel good and solid and, and confident um, in your self as a business owner. And it doesn't mean that you can't get to a place where um, things feel good, but, but it does, it also does not mean that you're not always going to keep growing. You will always keep growing and learning. And so again, just like life, business is life. Um, we're always going to be learning in this space. And so when you are putting an expectation on yourself that you have to get it right, when you're putting an expectation on yourself that something's wrong because you haven't figured this thing out, um, just kind of go back. I like to just sort of backtrack to, okay, business is no different than life. And um, if our goal is to figure it out, we're probably going to come up short, right? Um, and all of that is to say, you can enjoy your life. You can enjoy your business. You can run a successful business. You can make good money. You can get it from the perspective, especially if you are in your early in your business career, um, there is absolutely a, a level at which um, you can feel more secure and confident. But again, it's still a learning experience. And as I said, I have clients that really run the gamut in terms of their experience levels, how many years they've been in business and how much money they're making. And um, it does not mean that if you're making a shit ton of money that you also don't doubt yourself as a CEO, that you're also not still learning. Okay, Ali says, I am forever work in progress. Love it, love it, love it. Me too. Hopefully all of us feel that way. Um, okay, so... Let me see if I can see you guys better. So the first thing I want to talk about just briefly is this idea of what do I even mean by stepping into the CEO role? I think this is a, a concept and a term that's thrown around in the online space. And I even hesitated to use it, but I, 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 think, I think it's helpful to use because I think it means something to more people than not. And so for me to come up with my own term, um, I, I actually thought about that today. Like, are you really gonna call it CEO role? But I think truly, um, sometimes I'll use interchangeably for me, I'll use business owner. But I think truly, I really like the CEO role because I think it carries um, an, an element of leadership in its definition however you feel the role of CEO feels to you, you might not feel good about that. Um, I also have clients who are owners of their business, but they have CEOs who run their business. So again, this is, you have to define this, even this term for you. Um, and in some cases for some people, business owner might be more appropriate. But here's what I think is about embodying the CEO role. For me, it's about being in leadership. And I don't even want to say being a leader because, um, you know, a dictator can be a leader. That's simply a position that you're in. Um, being in leadership is, you know, really embodying that word. Um, I think leader can be, you know, a leader can be, um, you know, like a tasker versus um, being in leadership could be, um, you know, empowering your team, right? Just to give an example. Um, 
if you are stepping into the CEO role at your next level, whatever that means. To me, what I mean in this conversation is if you're, it means continuing to grow and learn as a CEO, to continuing to grow and learn as a business owner versus continuing to grow and learn in your craft, right? We all have some sort of craft or talent or thing that we're offering in our business. And that's also really, really important to continue to grow and learn in. That's not what today's conversation is about. This is about wearing the hat of the business owner, how to run a business. And I find that very, very often that's a bit, that's a big piece of, if not all of what I do um, as a coach, I'm coaching the business owner. I'm not coaching the person who's the master at that craft. You don't need me to help you with that. Um, you've got that, or maybe you have other people, unless you're a coach that you might um, look to for helping you, mentoring you, helping you learn in your craft. Um, but how to be a better business owner, like I said, there's always room for improvement there. There's always a space where you can learn and grow. Um, and how you define stepping into that means something like this. Success, how do you define success? Um, so, and, and really what are the values in your business? I'm, in, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm getting this across, but I wanna just make sure that we're not deciding that stepping into the CEO role means what I used to think it meant, which is act like a corporate CEO, right? Because I purposely started my business not to create that um, or to create the opposite of that. And so um, this doesn't mean that you, if, so again, if that word has a meaning for you that doesn't feel good, then find your own word and define it the way that you want. But this is the same way as defining success. Um, I could be a successful business owner and make a million dollars um, according to certain people's definitions. But for me, if I'm making a million dollars and I'm not also fulfilled in my work or I love my craft, but I hate running a business, to me, that's not success. That's just how I define it. And that's how I typically define it for my own clients. But again, they have their own definitions as well. But for me, success is not defined just by dollars. The dollars have to be there too. And so I think it's really, really important to, when we're having this conversation about what does it mean to step into your CEO role at a deeper level, what we're really talking about is what does it mean to, to up-level yourself as a business owner, as a person with skills running a business? How do you keep growing in that realm as well? Um, and when you're doing that, you have to have some values. You have to have some definitions of success so that you know where you're going. Um, so that's just sort of my little tidbit for that. Um, so making sure that you're defining success for you, making sure that you're defining. Um, and again, even if you don't like my term CEO, use what you want, business owner, leadership, um, whatever you like. Ali says, I like the term chief visionary officer. I love that. Um, Somebody I was just talking to, and now I can't remember who it is, and I can't remember. Anyway, they had their own definition, um, their own, sorry, title that they used for themselves. Um, I really like it. Hi, Tanisha. Welcome, welcome. Um, Ali says, I can also wrap my head around being a CEO because it means working on my business and not always being in it. Absolutely. Absolutely, Ali. And I think for me, that's... Um, to me, I sort of think about that in two ways. One, it's what I was talking about a minute ago where I can have a craft, I can be a really good coach, but I also need to be a really good business owner and that I'm always working on both of those. And so my craft being in the business and working on means the, you know, the business owner stuff. Um, but then I also like to think about it from the perspective of working on my business, meaning I'm just going to keep growing as a CEO and um, expanding my skills in this area. And so when I'm working on my business, I'm doing it from that perspective. I'm thinking about how my business can grow and expand um, or create more success, whatever success means to me. Um, if I'm working in my business as a CEO, then I might just be doing the tasks that I'm doing as a CEO, right? Having a team meeting, doing other things, right? Those are, those are slightly different. Anyway, Allie, I like, I like that sentence because I, I think that you can slice it and dice it a couple different ways. And maybe you meant it a third way. <laughs> Let me know. 
So, um, yeah. So the one other thing I want to say with my little preface here before we jump into the rest of the meat is being a CEO, being a business owner, these are skills that I find a lot of people don't have when they first get started and that's okay. Um, these are skills you can learn. So, 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 so many people say to me, God, I should have taken a business class in college. Um, I, I uh, said I didn't take one, any in undergrad. I only took graduate business classes, but um, I think this idea of needing to have a certain experience um, or a certain credential or a certain training is a thing that we often use as our mind likes to get used for us to, as a way to get in our own way. Um, and while I'm, I'm absolutely an advocate of going and getting the training that you need, um, our society really is shifting. And there are a lot of people who, for example, are becoming very successful without a college degree, right? And so a college degree used to be the formula for which everyone needed to have to be successful. And that's actually, in many cases, it's never been true for everyone. Um, but, uh, you know, that's really shifting now. And that is still true for lots of people. And it is also not true for lots of people. And so that's not what this conversation is about. But again, reminding yourself that you don't have to have a certain credential, a certain training, um, or or a certain um, type of experience in order to be a good business owner. And in fact, sometimes what I think, I have spent 18 years in the corporate world before I started this business. What is going on with my dress today? Um, and sometimes I think that in many ways, yes, I spend a lot of time in business. I have a lot from my corporate career. I was a consultant. So I've seen behind the scenes in so many businesses before I ever started helping other people with theirs, um, with their small business and this small business that I'm running now. Um, so I have a lot of benefits of, of experience that I can use here. And I had some shit that I had to unlearn because I was in corporate. I had some stuff that I had to unlearn um, because I was determined not to run my business like a corporate CEO, according to my definition. And so, um, and I, and I know lots of clients that, that are nodding right along with me saying, absolutely. And that's some of the stuff that we're working on in terms of, I thought I had to run my business this way because that's how we all did it in corporate, but it doesn't feel good. And so I have to find another way. Um, and so the unraveling of things is something that I, I oftentimes will help my clients with. Um, and so if that's you, you're not alone. Um, I had to do it. I've got clients that are doing it. Um, it absolutely can be done. Um, and if you don't have any business experience, you have some advantage as well. We all have disadvantages and advantages. But again, the good news is being a CEO, stepping into your CEO um, role at a deeper, deeper level, learning to run a business is a skill that can be learned. It's a skill that can be learned. So let go of expectations of getting it all right, of mastering it on day one or day 742. Um, and let's remind ourselves that we're here to learn, always here to learn. There's always something we can learn from each other. I learn from you guys. Um, and none of us are, are you know, um, this isn't about reaching a finish line. This is just about continual growth and learning. And because CEO skills are learnable, we have some stuff we can talk about today. Okay, let me know for those of you who are live, um, please let me know if you have any questions as we're going through. Thank you for your comments so far. And also if you have anything specific to your business, specific to what's what you're experiencing as a CEO, as a business owner, if you have any questions or any coaching I can provide to you while we're going through this, um, please let me know related to this topic. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is this idea of um, stepping into your, into your CEO role at a deeper level. Um, one way that I think a lot of people talk about this, this is one of the ways that I like to talk about it because I think it, it um, it helps drive it to a little bit more of a granular level or to a little more of a tangible level. My eyes are watering for some reason. Um, is this idea of treating your business like a business. 
it's very, very easy for those of us who are solopreneurs, um, which I was for many years before I had a team. Um, I think when you are a solopreneur, I think when you start, uh, start a business while also doing something else, like maybe having a nine to five at the same time, right? A lot of people start off with a nine to five and they grow their business and then they start to transition. Um, whatever your situation, I think a lot of us, because of the way we start out or because we think we don't have the skills as a business owner, or because we just don't, um, like for me, I, I had a hard time in the beginning treating my business like a business because to me, I was determined actually the way I used to define it. I was kind of determined not to treat my business like a business <laughs> because to me, treating it like a business was treating it. Um, I didn't want to act like a CEO level um, executive in a corporate uh, organization because I spent a lot of time there and I saw a lot of um things that didn't resonate with me. And so I was determined not to do it their way, which really just means I was determined to do it my way. Um, and so I didn't actually like that whole idea of a CEO. Now I like it because I think um, I've, I've really shifted my own mindset around just around my whole corporate experience and what that was for me, but also around what it's like to be in business. And it's not my job to get mad at somebody else for running a business the way that I wouldn't run a business. It's just my job to run my business the way I want to run my business. And it's also my job to help my clients find ways to run their business in a way that really resonates with them. Um, and so again, I, I just want to say all of that as we start talking about treating your business like a business, because I think that is a very strong value that I have. And I even had to work through the, even saying this, like I, the old four, five years ago, me is laughing at me for talking about treating a business like a business here, right? Because I really, that was a journey for me. And, and so that's all to say, if that piece of it is a journey for you, or if that's a hard pill to swallow for you today, you're not alone. And I see you and, um, and see how this lands with you. So treating your business like a business, being a leader, being a CEO, being a, a successful business owner. I like to think about it in a couple of different ways. If I think about a successful business owner, um, and maybe it's about thinking about a successful conscious business owner, that person, in theory, if I'm just like coming up with a person sitting on a cloud running a lovely, you know, idealistic business. Um, they're probably taking care of two things primarily. Number one, they're taking care of whoever it is that they serve, right? Yeah, for me, coaching, it's taking care of my clients in the way that I take care of them. Maybe the better way to say is serving my clients, right? Client service, continuing to excel at that, doing a good job at that, putting that top of mind. That is um, why I'm in business. So that is something that I need to always be taking care of. Um, but then also a good business owner takes care of the business. And what I wanna offer to you, and this is where this idea of like treating a business like a business, or are you treating your business like you treat yourself? gets really tricky and really important. And I want to offer to those of you who are parents, maybe think about this in terms of how you parent your children. But the truth is you want to think for those of you who are heart-centered and doing work that is deeply, deeply, deeply personal, like I am my brand, right? I, I am what I'm selling. <laughs> my coaching services are what I'm selling. And my business is not me and I am not my business. And the way that I like to think about that and is like energetically, energetically, I am me and I am deeply, deeply connected to this thing that I created that is my business, but my business also has its own energy. It is its own entity, according to, you know, the IRS, <laughs> um, and one of the things that I used to do when I was, um, doing uh, hypnosis, is, hypnotherapy is I would have my clients, and I still do this from time to time, full permission to steal this idea and use it for yourself, um, is to 
go into some sort of meditation or just take a minute and close your eyes and be quiet. And whatever this means to you, connect to the energy of your business and ask it what it wants you to know today. Um, maybe we'll do this. I've done this a long time ago and here in the group, maybe, maybe we'll do this sometime. But the idea is that just like if you're a parent and you know your child comes from you, um, if they're biological children, but they are not you, right? You might be able to literally see your eyes in their eyes, but they are not you. They are their own entity. They are their own thing. And even if you're responsible for them, um, they are their own entity. They have their own energy. And your job as a parent is not to take care of them necessarily in the way that you would like to be taken care of as a person, not to take care of them um, and to make sure that they do or become um, the things that you want them to do or to become, that you're thinking about it from the perspective of what's in the best interest of my child and what does my child need from me right now? What is in their highest good? What is in their best interest? And that what they might need or what might be in their best interest may be counter to what you would really, really want for them or what you would want for yourself if you were them, right? You are not your child. You are not your business. Um, and so again, whichever way you want to think about this, take whatever you want from this. But I think it's really important to start thinking about if you haven't already um, and taking this to the next level. I think we can always take this to the next level because it's something you created. But thinking about your business as a business, thinking about your business as having its own energy, as being its own entity, as not being you. And then in so many ways, you getting back into you treating yourself, you treating your business like a business, you being a successful conscious business owner or CEO, your job is to serve the business and your clients or your customers, right? to serve or take care of both of those. And you're like, the, what do they say in, in legal terms? Like agent for, you're like the agent, but you're not the business. Even if you're the product, you're still not the business. And thinking about it that way, um, it doesn't mean that you can't be beautifully and deeply connected to your business. I, I'm getting chills. Like I, I, I feel very deeply about my business. Um, but when it becomes me, then it makes, that's where the mindset stuff jumps in at a whole nother planet level, right? Because then we're treating our business like ourselves and we're not always as good to ourselves as we are to other people, right? And, and then our business suffers as a result of us not give, being of service to our business. So number one, I'd like to offer this concept of if you are improving and stepping into a higher level of CEO leadership, if you are treating your business like a business, you are serving the business and the people that your business serves. Let me know how that lands. Let me know what that make, if that makes sense. Let me know if you have questions about that. Let me just see if I can. Okay. Um, and then, <clears throat> And then if that's the purpose, then under each of those things, you can start to see what actions you can take to take care of both of those two things. Um, so for me, if I'm thinking about my business and my values and the way I define success, um, my, my, my very, very important um, inside the business. So let's, again, so much of business <laughs> is about client service and serving your customers and uh, making a change in the world and making an impact. And I don't want to diminish that, but that's not what today's conversation is about. Um, so just remembering like, that's a very, very, very important part of being, of, um, of being a CEO. And that's not the side of things that we're talking about today. This is you selfishly get to think about yourself as a business owner and what you need to learn. Um, and in doing that, we in turn take care of our clients better. It just beautifully naturally works out that way, right? It's that whole concept of if you put your oxygen mask on first, 
you know, if you can take care of yourself, then you can be a better caregiver or service provider or whatever to the people that you care for or provide services to. So for me, thinking about running my business and what my values are is it's really, really important to me as a business owner to feel fulfilled, not just in the craft, in the work and the service, but also behind the scenes. I, I really like running my business. I like getting on calls with my team and talking things through. I like thinking through what I'm going to do from a marketing perspective. I, I like that stuff. Not everybody does and not everybody likes all of it. And I'm not going to pretend that I like every aspect of my business, but part of my job as a CEO to remain fulfilled in the CEO role, again, that's separate from me being fulfilled as a coach and working with people who I love, which I do. Um, my job, my, my responsibility as CEO is also to take care of my fulfillment and, and how I feel running my business and to notice what feels good and what doesn't, and then to take some action around what doesn't feel good to keep doing what does feel good. Um, and so if fulfillment is, is important to you, which I imagine many people are, again, I invite you to think about it from the perspective of working towards feeling more fulfilled as a business owner in running your business. Um, at the same time, fulfillment for me, thank you, Tanisha, come back and catch the replay. Um, and let me know, Tanisha, just tag me if you have any questions or comments, and I'll come back in and answer them. Um, but the, the, the money that comes in and the profit that we make is also just as important as the fulfillment aspect, because they actually work so beautifully together, right? Like I can't actually do my service if I'm not bringing in enough money. I also can't, I probably am not going to enjoy what I'm doing as a business owner if I'm not bringing in the right amount of money. But also part of my job is to play around with how to bring in the money. So all of those things, profit and fulfillment are my two of my top priorities in addition to my team, feeling that my team is deeply connected to the service that we're providing and the service that they're providing to our, to our team and to the business. So thinking about where, how are you taking care of your business? Again, we're, we're assuming that the service piece is taken care of. That's a topic for another day. Um, okay, there's something else I wanted to say on this topic. Yeah. So if we're treating our business like our like a business, if we're being remind if we're reminding ourselves that our business has its own energy, what I love about that is it just helps us um, not get as wrapped around the axle in some of our stuff. Mindset's always going to come up. It's always going to be a thing. It's that's also how we learn as a business owner. Um, mindset's also a long lifelong journey. Um, but it does help us become more neutral. It does help us make better business decisions. And it does help us serve the business better when we can remind ourselves that we are not our business. Does that make sense? Um, because if, if, if I see myself, my, if I see my business as myself, um, I'm already not so much in service. And um, I guess we could, argue that we need to be in service of ourselves and take care of ourselves too, right? Um, but this is just the way that I, the way that I like to think about it. So again, grain of salt, if this resonates with you, if it doesn't, fine. But if it doesn't, just listen and see if there's anything here that you can take away because you don't have to use the same words that I use and you don't have to think about it exactly the same way. Um, and my hope is with all of these things, part of my big why is to help people to think differently. So if you're treating your business like a business, um, that's a great, and Allie's saying this too, this is a really good question to ask yourself. Am I treating my business like a business? Um, the one that I always like to say is, what is in the best interest of my business? Especially if you're trying to decide between A and B, um, or if you're trying to decide whether to do something, um, uh, really with any decision, but I think if you just ask yourself, what's in the best interest of my business, when you're asking yourself a business question, 
that is going to all the time serve you, serve your business, therefore serve the people that you're serving um, because the business must also be served. The, the best interest of the business, and this doesn't mean make decisions based on profit alone, right? Like this doesn't mean um, be selfish. This doesn't mean only serve the business, right? Remember, I think a successful CEO serves both the business and the people that they're serving. Um, and that is absolutely something that you can do in a conscious way. It's absolutely something you can do in a spiritual way. It's absolutely something you can do in being of service. And if we're not taking care of the business, i.e. bringing in enough money or holding boundaries around pricing or holding boundaries around what we do, this happens a lot of times um, clients will tell me like, I don't want to do this work, this particular slice of the work anymore, but I'm just going to do it when, because I need more clients. I'm only going to do it until I can get the clients that I really want. And while it doesn't have to be a black and white flip the switch kind of thing, you can do that type of thing with a transition. Um, the truth is, if you're going to keep serving clients doing something that doesn't serve you, you're not serving the business, right? So if you can just keep that top of mind, nine times out of 10, that question alone will bring you to the right answer. And that's one of my favorite questions to ask my clients. Feel free to take it and use it. Um, stick it on your, stick a little post-it note on your computer. What's in the best interest of my business? It just helps to ground you back in to serving your business. Your business is serving the people. So again, if you're struggling between a boundary where let's say a client's asking you to do something and you feel that that's not in the best interest of your business, then you can have a conversation. But at the end of the day, I would argue that what serves your business also serves your clients, even if it's serving your future clients. Um, so because you doing something that feels like a sacrifice or a compromise or a values compromise or a, um, a discounted rate that you might later feel resentful of, you're actually interjecting different energy into your client service, into your customer service. Um, and I would argue that while you might be helping them in the short term, you're not helping them in the long term. And I think that we are better able to serve people at our greatest potential when we stay true to ourselves. And that means serving your business. Let me know how that's landing. Okay. I'm just gonna check the comments here and then we will move on. Um, Okay, so I have a little funny. Am I going to say that now? Okay, so we talked about treating a business like a business. Um, so a couple of little things that you might do. I have two in particular little exercises that you might um, engage in at some level um, to think about how to take, your, take this to the next level, to think about how to treat your business more like a business. One of them is a little fun and silly, but it's actually not. So first off, I think let's start off with getting clear for you what is, a, and maybe this is a good journal prompt for you um, to start with, but get clear for yourself, what does a successful business owner look like? What does a successful conscious CEO look like? I'm using a bunch of words here, whatever words you want to use. What does it look like? What are their qualities? What kinds of decisions do they make? What, how do they run their team? Um, what's their vibe in their marketing? Uh, how do they make decisions around pricing? How do they manage their books, right? You could ask any kind of question, pick any aspect of business and ask, how is your idea, your ideal of a successful business owner of a really deeply aligned CEO, how are they operating? And I think sometimes, at least for me, when I started this business four and a half years ago, almost exactly, um, yeah, I didn't have any models. Um, my dad was technically self-employed, but he worked for a law firm. So and he was a partner, but he didn't start a business. So I, I 
you could argue he had his own business, but he didn't. He was in a partnership. Um, I didn't know anyone who had ever started their own business. I didn't know anyone who ran a small business. I didn't know anyone who was an entrepreneur. I didn't know anyone who just made something up out of thin air. <laughs> and um, not having a model is really, really hard when you're looking to learn and grow. That's why I think it's really, really helpful to find a couple of people. Number one, find a business owner, whether they're doing exactly what you're doing or not, it doesn't quite matter. Um, for me, it was very helpful to find some coaches to follow online that I felt really aligned to. Um, eventually I hired one and she's been my business coach for over a year now. Um, I've hired many, many business coaches, but, um, looking, reminding yourself that there, that, that you can see the future, you can see the next step or four steps ahead of you, I think is really, really important. It doesn't mean that you have to do what they're doing. Doesn't mean you have to follow exactly the way they do it. My coach does things very differently than I do. And we have a lot of similarities. Um, and what works for her does not always work for me. That's not, a, it's not about copying. It's not about following in someone's footsteps. It's about having a model. It's about having someone that's ahead of you, ahead of your journey, um, who you can look to as a reminder that it can be done. Um, and again, for me, it was a reminder that it could be done in a conscious way, that it could be done in, in a really beautiful service-oriented ethical way. Um, and and so number one, find somebody doing either the work you're doing or somebody that you feel um, runs a business similar enough to yours, doesn't have to be exact. And it doesn't even have to be similar, but just find a model, find somebody in business who's a real life person, not a celebrity, a real life person um, that you can track and use as a model or one of your models, because it's really, really important when you're having those moments of what's in the best interest of my business, you could even say, what might this person say? if I ask them about my business, right? Or what might this person do if this was the problem that they had in their business or if this was a decision they were trying to make in their, in their business? Giving yourself a model is really, really helpful. Um, so thinking about that, um, I like to pick real world examples. I also think that there are probably, most people have famous people or well-known people or people who, um, I'll just say famous people. I don't necessarily mean, you know, Oprah, but it could be Oprah. It could be a lesser known person. It could be an author, whoever it is that you think, um, again, somebody who's running a business, Oprah is clearly running a business really well, um, several businesses. Um, but somebody that is, Again, I, I think it's important to pick a real world example because when we look at famous people, we tend to think that something is, you know, an exception to the rule or um, uh, an outlier kind of thing. And, and so I don't want to offer that up, but I do think sometimes it's easier to start with somebody who you admire, um, who's in the public eye, who you can um, really think about what would they, what, what, what might they say? in this situation? What would they think was in the best interest of my business? Again, because this is what you're doing. You're all creating a model of what you're stepping into. You're creating a model of where you're going. And if you don't have that model, make it, create it. So find a famous person, find a real life person running a business um, that feels aligned to yours. It doesn't have to be the same business type of business. Um, and then I think too, you know, in many, many ways, this is like the concept that a lot of world religions have taken. Um, if you look at the fact that there's Jesus, Muhammad, um, Buddha, right? There are all these sort of models of, of what it is like to be a good human um, that religions has, have offered us offered up to us. And I'm not, not necessarily suggesting that you need to go down that path. If you have a religion, great stick with it. But my point is, you know, um, people used to wear a long time ago, the, what would Jesus do bracelets and, and the WWJD sort of thing. And again, I'm, I'm not religious. I'm not suggesting a religion, but there's a concept here that I think is really helpful, which is 
gosh, I have this hard question. What would this person that I've already decided is not perfect, but a model of someone I can look up to who, who can make good, clear decisions for their business? What, what might they do? What might they say? How might I sort of channel them, not exactly channel them, but channel some version of them into my business? How can I infuse some of that into my business? Because again, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you need to copy someone. This is about you being you, but when you have a model, it, it helps to bring things down into better business, better decision-making. Um, so I will offer that. And then my silly is uh, if you've not checked out my Facebook and Instagram posts this week, I'm doing a whole, and it's so sad because I'm traveling and I'm not home, but um, I'm doing a whole series this week on business, lesson, business lessons that I've learned from my cat, George. And um, so if you're struggling with um, tapping into the CEO role, what the vibe of that is, I even posted a picture. In fact, you know what? Do I have it up? Let me see. Let's see if I can share this really fast. If I can't figure out how to do this quickly, I will stop. Oh no, I can share. Oh, it's not letting me. Okay. Um, anyway, check out my post this week and, um, oh shoot, how do I get back to you guys? Check out my post this week. Um, there's a picture, there's a photo of George. George is a massive cat. He is He's very bossy, but what I love about him, and I use him to help me, he's one of my models for stepping into CEO role energy because he is such a love and he knows how to love me and take care of me, i.e. client service and taking care of the client and excellent service. He gives me excellent service, right? <laughs> that sounds terrible. Um, but he knows how to love me. He knows how to be in relationship with me. He and I have just such a beautiful, deep relationship. Um, and so he's got the client service thing down. But George is like unapologetically demanding, and I'm not suggesting that you need to be demanding, especially with your team, but unapologetically asks me for what he wants. Usually it means he wants to be fed. He knows what he wants. He has clear strategies to get there. And he expects to be fed when he feels like it. And there's so, and there's so many lessons. Go check out my social media posts this week. Um, they're in the group. They're on my Facebook business page and my Instagram business page. Both are Laura Livingston coaching. Um, but there are so many little lessons we can learn from George. And I'm sure you have, um, you may also have a pet or a cat or a George and feel free to steal George and, and his energy can't steal George the cat, but you can steal the idea of George um, for another one of your models. Again, where can you tap into that CEO energy at a deeper level? It's really, really hard to tap into a new energy when you don't know what it feels like. Um, and so this is one way that you can do it. And one of the things, because I used to be a hypnotherapist, one of the things that I learned about the brain, this is why things like visualization and meditation and affirmations and um, tapping into the energy of, of what you want to manifest and what you're, because once you can already decide that you want it, it's already half created. So tapping into that energy. Um, a lot of times I'll have my clients like visualize the people that they're calling in for their next level for their business, whether it's a team member or clients or whatever, because the brain doesn't know the difference between what's real, like tangibly in front of you and what your imagination says. The brain doesn't know the difference between real and imagination. And so, sorry, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between reality and your imagination. And that's why things like visualization, things like tapping into energy of what you want is so powerful. Um, and so again, this is why this is one of the ways that you can start to step into the CEO role more deeply. There's some more practical things we're going to talk about here in a minute, but from this side of things, um, what would George do in this 
situation, right? George is a great one to conjure up when you um, need to hold a boundary, you need to ask for what you want, need to stay steadfast to your pricing, um, need to expect better for yourself and others. Um, he's, a, he's just a funny little big, he's actually a massive cat. Um, everybody, when they meet him, they go, whoa, I didn't expect him to be so big. You see mountain lion. Um, and his personality is big and his body is big and his love is big. Right. And so there's so much that, um, that we can learn from George. So check out my Facebook posts. You can even like, there's even a photo I have of him sitting in a, in a desk chair where he really does his paws are folded. He looks like the most serious, like boss man CEO that you've ever seen. So I put that in, in there. So check that out. There's more, lots more le best business lessons you could learn from George. I'm actually playing around with doing a, um, a live here in the group that will be called something like everything I need to know in business I learned from George, because this dude just teaches me all the time. So feel free to steal George, feel free to steal a model um, from somebody famous, steal, not steal, pick a model that, of somebody that's famous, pick a model of somebody that's running a business in a way that, that you feel aligned to. Um, those are really, really helpful ways to step into your CEO role. And then the last piece, when we just think about this from the perspective of what are some more practical things you can do? What are the ways that we talked about the last couple of weeks, we talked about um, mindset and action and how they go together. I did a whole series of how do you know if your issue, if what you need to do to solve your issue is mindset work, or if what you need to do to solve your issue is action and how both of those really oftentimes it's both, but sometimes we want to run down the mindset rabbit hole and not take any action. And sometimes we keep taking action, but we're not taking care of our mindset. And so anyway, check out those lives. It was I think two weeks ago and three weeks ago now. Um, but when we think about this from that perspective, so when this is a, another great example of stepping into the CEO role is both an action, like you can take some practical actions around it. And you also probably need to do some mindset work around it. So I love some of these because they go together. Um, so I want to offer up a couple of additional examples. Um, how else, and, and maybe this is another question to ask yourself. Where can I step it up in terms of treating my business like a business? Where can I step it up in terms of treating my business like a business? And if you're not sure how to ask that question, then pick an aspect of your business. Where could I step up my marketing and, and, and treating my business more like a business? Where could I step up my, um, my, the way I run a team? in terms of treating a business like a business or acting you know, like a better leader, being a better leader? Where could I step it up in my business in terms of how I manage my books? Um, these are great questions to ask yourself and, and looking at different layers of your business because, and this, uh, please don't hear me from the perspective of being a perfectionist. Um, if you were my client and we were having a one-on-one -on -one conversation right now, we'd be looking at the exact challenge that you're dealing with and we'd be finding solutions around that. But because I'm talking to everybody, um, I'm just giving some examples. But again, I'm not suggesting that you go look at every aspect of your business and trying to perfect it. That's not a valuable use of your time. And if your challenge is bringing in money, where can you step it up around everything related to money in your business in treating your business more like a business? Maybe you need to hire a bookkeeper. Maybe you need to stop, I'm going to make this up, but like stop doing all your um, books on a notebook piece of paper and you want to like use a system to do it. Um, maybe I, I have a client I've been working, we've been working on this um, lately. This is one of her big challenges for the year. And she's made a decision that even though she is financially stable, um, she really wants to make a significantly greater amount of money this year. And one, we're putting a plan in place for her to be able to do that. But two, part of her from a mindset perspective, part of her challenge and decision that she's made for herself is she's going to review her, her numbers every month. Every single month, she's going to look at her numbers because 
be because she wasn't for a while because things were fine and she was just letting them be fine. But because now she has a money goal that she's really determined to meet, there's something that is really helpful for her in acting like a CEO, treating her business like a business and actually reviewing her dollars. Um, let's see some other examples, hiring someone. If you're hiring someone is not always the answer. Um, but I do find that it's something people hesitate on and it tends to be the thing that you think you need to wait a little longer before you do it, that you're almost ready. And I think nine times out of 10, when you're almost ready to hire someone, you're ready to hire someone. Um, so, or the next someone to your team or, or then delegating the next, it doesn't even need to be hiring. It could just be delegating the next layer of something off of your plate onto your team's plate. Um, again, I, I think it's very easy to say that that's the answer to a lot of things and it might not be, but for a lot of people, them stepping in more deeply into the CEO role um, oftentimes means looking at, and here's the other question I'd ask yourself, looking at the stuff that you're doing every week, what are all, and if you don't know and you, and you, um, feel that your business is running you or your tasks are running you and you don't feel in charge or in control of them, take the time to write down all the stuff that you do and maybe even time track. You can use little time tracker apps for that so that you can like give them cat, like maybe pick five or six categories and just time track it that way. It's a lot easier than writing it down. But notice where you're spending your time and then look at that. If I was truly treating my business like a business, if I was truly being a, um, an exceptional CEO, would I be spending my time on this? Would I be spending 50% of my time on this? Or would I be spending 50% of my time on client service, right? Um, and so thinking that through, and this isn't about... Um, this isn't about needing to jump ahead, right? So if your goal is to make $200,000 this year and you're making 50K right now, this isn't about spending money so that you can get to 200K. And it's also not about inv not investing, right? So you have to still meet your business where it is, but also set it up for the next and the next and the next step. Um, and I think sometimes these kinds of actions where you're saying, and, and then here's the other question, like future, your, future me, what would future business owner Laura say about this? What decision would the future me, the me who's making two grand, 200,000, two grand, the me who's making 200,000, what would she, what decision would she make? Not what decision would she make when she's making 200,000, but what decision would she make now given the, what she knows about my business and its potential? What decision would she make about my business now that would help me start moving in that direction? Does that make sense? Um, hiring someone, um, taking something off your plate, using a system instead of a notebook, using a system instead of um, a spreadsheet, um, automating something. Automating something is a great place to set yourself, your business up for sustainability. It's a great way to treat your business like a business. Please don't automate something for the sake of automating something. <laughs> but so often I find that the actions we take in our business um, serve a practical element. If you automate something, you are setting your business up for sustainability. It's, it's don't automate something that doesn't make sense. But if you're automating something that's giving you a challenge, it's absolutely worth the time and energy to automate it because it, once you do it, it's set. And then you really are set up to receive more, whatever it is. Um, it's also something that I think puts your money where your mouth is when you take that action from a mindset perspective, taking that action um, is, the, it's the action that someone takes when they believe that they will come, right? So I, um, <clears throat> if you don't have a way to manage P, uh, new clients coming in, if you don't have a system to manage your clients, because let's say you only have three and you need 17 and um, you just started, so you only have three clients, and you're managing all your client information in a spreadsheet or in a notebook, 
no, you don't necessarily need the automation right now. But if you set something up that will grow with you, again, I'm not, I'm not <clears throat> recommending that you pay bunches of dollars that you don't need to pay for. But if you only meet your business where your business is now, you're not setting yourself up mindset wise or practically speaking to receive new clients. And so again, using this as a tiny example, if I'm looking, if I'm new to business, I have three clients and I want 17. When I take an action to make it easier for me to manage all 17, make it realistically feasible to manage all 17, then from a mindset perspective, I'm taking action as a person who knows that the 17 are coming. And then from a practical perspective, I don't have the 17 yet. I do have the time now. If I wait until I have the 17, I probably won't have the time to set up the thing that I need that will enable me to support all of those clients. And so then I'm putting out this energy, knowingly or unknowingly, that I'm actually not available for 17 clients because my business is actually not ready for it, right? So this is a, it's, it's a tiny example, and this isn't an example that's going to resonate with everybody, but what is your example automation? It doesn't have to be an automation problem, but where can you take a, a step? And it doesn't even have to be a big project. Where can you take a step in your business where you're treating it more like a business, where you're stepping more into the CEO role, where you're being more George-like, you're being more Oprah-like, you're, um, you're thinking and asking yourself the question on a regular basis, what does my business need? What's in the best interest of my business? Am I taking care of my business and my customers? Am I taking care of my business and my customers just like I would if I had two very different children who needed different things from me? That I'm acting in both of their best interests, but both must be served, right? Um, okay. I'm just going to check for comments. If you guys have any comments, I can't believe it's been an hour. I still have more to say and I will hold it for another day. Um, as a reminder, I'm offering a free session right now. So if you are looking for some help with treating your business like a business, if you're looking for some support, if you want to scale in particular, that's a great thing to, to do in the 45 minute session. Um, Take me up on it. I'm offering free coaching. I don't know how long I'll be offering it, but I'm offering it right now. I'm having a blast. So many people that have done the free session are a part of this community. Um, and I, it's just, it's just been super fun to meet some new people and serve some new people, expand my impact. Um, so take me up on this offer. It's a 45 minute coaching session. And um, I would love to be of service and love to help you step more deeply into your CEO role, whatever that definition is for you, um, wherever you are in your business and whatever it is that you're looking to create. <clears throat> I believe that you can do it. I believe that you can do it on your own terms. I believe you can do it in a way that doesn't wear you out. I believe that you can do it in a way that's sustainable um, and that really honors and values your values and your skills and your talents. Um, the way I run my business is not for everyone. And I'm really, really good at helping people figure out how to do it for themselves, how to run it themselves in a way that really works for them, not in my way, in your way. Um, so take me up on that. I'm also going to be doing a workshop coming up soon. I'll be sharing that information. Uh, I've been really jonesing to get, uh, more community events here in the group and getting us all on zoom where we can, um, you guys can have a chance to ask questions, not in this format, you know, with the, with the comments, but to really be able to come on camera or to come on live with your voice, um, for us to be more in community and for me to do some, some training in that type of environment. So stay tuned on that. That is coming soon. And um, I feel like I had one more question, one more announcement. Oh, I'm doing a, um, I'm doing another free coaching uh, live here in the group. So the, the last Wednesday of the month, whatever that date is, 
just wanted to announce that sooner than later. Um, we had some issues with the tech, uh, so a lot of people weren't notified um, last time that I last month when I did it, but the time before that, um, people were really enjoying it. So I'm going to keep doing it for a little while. So it's a coaching Q and A. Bring one question that you want, um, so some coaching around in your business. And I will, um, I'll go to the questions in order and I will, it's live, it's here in the group. So if you're already getting notifications for these lives, then you won't miss it. Um, if you're not getting notifications for these lives, there is a way to do that. Um, when you go into the group page, there are some little buttons on the on the far right, like three little dots. If you click that, there's a way to manage your notifications of the group and it will notify you that I'm going live or it'll notify you when I post things in here or when anybody posts things in here. Um, or you can change your notifications to make it work for you. There's lots of settings or several settings. So uh, the last Wednesday of the month will be the coaching Q&A. If you are live, come and bring a question about your business and I will give you some live coaching on it. And I always like to say that these community events um, are just really neat. This is a special group. This is a really special community. There's a lot of good vibes in here. And I find that the energy of these community groups um, really builds on each other. And somebody will ask a question about their own business and then somebody else needed to hear it. And um, sometimes the questions even end up being themed and it's just really, really beautiful. And I always love um, bringing people together because I, I think that um, I've said this before, but I didn't have a community when I first started my business. And that was um, something that I really worked to create and I did become a part of another community and then it was really important to me to create this one and so I do believe that um, running a business when you have um, buddies and colleagues and other people doing the same thing um, nearby then um, we're all better together so I hope that's what this group is for you also one more reminder to be promoting your work here in the group Tuesdays, are, you can promote your freebies inside the thread of the, the post that goes out. Fridays, you can promote anything you want. Um, you're also welcome to post anything that you want that doesn't include during the week, other days, as long as it doesn't include a link, um, as long as you're not sharing. Please don't post a video, but just post content, post value. Tell us what's going on. Copy paste um, a post that you put on your website, I mean, a post that you put on your business page and just put a fresh post in our, in our group and share it. Let us know what you're up to. Share your wisdom with the group. Um, people are getting clients out of this group. People are making really beautiful connections, colleagues, collaborations, all kinds of really cool stuff is happening. And we can't do that. We don't know what you, if we don't know what you do and what you offer, we, we don't know. So sell, promote, and also just please share value, please share what you're working on, please share um, any kind of tips or advice that you have, um, value related to your work, um, let the group in on, on your talents and your magic, and um, you never know where that's going to go. That's how I've met so many of my clients, that's how I've met uh, all of my business coaches I've met in Facebook groups. Um, you can absolutely make real connections online, and I think that this community really proves that. And, and I'm really, really proud of that. So anyway, be part of us. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you have to uh, come, are listening, blah. if you're listening to this on the replay, please ask me any questions, tag me in your comment and I will come back in and respond. Have a lovely, lovely week. I'll see you same time, same place next week. Have a good one.